Alrighty guys, welcome back to another little video where today, today we're going to be building that. So essentially to give you guys kind of a um, understanding of what we're going to be doing here today, that is a full custom hardline liquid cooling loop. That is a all-in-one kit that I wanted to do a build and review of today. So today's video is probably going to be a little bit on the longer side. Um, I haven't fully edited it out, so I don't know exactly how long it's going to be. So um, yeah, hope you enjoy and hope you guys can learn a thing or two because... Honestly, I had a lot of fun doing this one. Like, I had a lot of fun doing this one, so, um, yeah. By the way, please ignore that absolutely terrible bend between the CPU and the radiator. <laughs> I ran out of tubing. <laughs> and so it was just like, uh, okay. But I digress. Let's get into it. Alright, so here is the kit. I have it all opened up, and I just opened up the box. I don't exactly know everything that's in here. So let's take a look and see. So we got six pieces of, I'm assuming this is a PETG, like a red tinted tube, even though it looks more orange than red. But, eh, I mean, hey, whatever works. Let's see, we've got a, ooh, nice, a squeezy bottle. That's for filling the reservoir. Let's see, what is this? This one feels heavy. You know, I'm trying to do this one-handed. It's not as easy as you would think. Let's take a look and see. Ooh, okay, so these are our blocks. This is the GPU block, which I will not be using, but I will be talking about. We've got all of the dual rotary fittings. Wait a second. Sweet! These are actually the fittings that I'm using in my um, X58 build right there. These are the exact same fittings. These are really nice fittings. We've got a uh, drain or a, um, what is it, the air bleeding port for the top of the reservoir. And all of the fittings. That's awesome. Let's see, also the mounting hardware for the blocks and some thermal paste. And the CPU block. All right, moving on to the next box. Let's take a little look-see. Ooh, here is the main event, which is actually what really got me interested in this kit in the first place. This is a, I believe it's called SC600 variable speed water pump with an acrylic top. Um, it's also got, from what I can tell, a uh ddc style internal rotor so it's going to have pretty good head pressure and we've actually got a model number right there oh it's a freezer mod pump it's a variable speed freezer mod pump nice i've actually really excited to test this thing out i've really been wanting one of these all right so i'm assuming that this is one of our fans yep the uh the LED red deep cool fans that are definitely not from deep cool. But we're going to be testing out these. We've got another fan right here. Yep, another fan. So that means that this is going to be our reservoir. This is a big one too. Nice. Well, this is a two-handed job. That's not something I hear very often. All right, and here is our fancy dancy new reservoir. This thing actually looks really nice. This thing feels high quality. Let's see, so it has what it feels like an acetal top and bottom. It's also got multiple inlet ports and it's also got the top plug. Also got the bottom port for just screwing it directly onto the pump. And from what it looks like, you might actually be able just to pull out the red thing if you didn't like the red helix. Honestly, I kind of like it, so I'm going to keep it. But yeah, that's really interesting. That's really nice res. And then finally, radiator. This should be a 18 core copper, or not copper, aluminum radiator. 
And if this is if this is the correct radiator, and it definitely is, this thing should actually be pretty sufficient for cooling. Um, most radiators you can see through pretty well. This one is freaking dense. And it is the same aluminum radiator from the cheaper um, softline tubing build, or from the cheaper softline tubing kit, which I will be doing a separate review on. But yeah, this thing, I'm actually thinking this thing's going to cool pretty well once we put some aftermarket fans on it. And now, let me introduce to you the computer that we're going to be putting this all in. This is my Rosewell Prism case. Um, not the nicest case in the world, but it is going to be water cooling friendly, and that's why I actually chose it. I have a few other projects in the work right now, and this was honestly the best water cooling case that I could simply just grab. So let's start putting everything together. The first step is going to be grabbing our fittings. More specifically, we need the T-fitting. Oh, it's right here. It's a rotary T-fitting. Okay, so I'm just blind. They have a rotary T-fitting, which is actually even better. So take the fitting out of the bag, screw it into the bottom of the reservoir. That is the side that doesn't have all of the ports on it. And then you're going to screw that directly to the water pump. All right, now we got the pump and reservoir mounted together. Um, these things are a little bit of a pain in the butt. You're going to end up wanting to tighten it without uh, over tightening it, because if you over tighten it, you could possibly crack the acrylic or um, strip out the, um, what is it, the palm or acetal, whatever it is. And so you want to make sure these things are tight enough, but not too tight. But I think I did a pretty good job. I guess we'll find out if it leaks, but that will come later. The thing next we're gonna do is put on the CPU water block. Now this is gonna be kind of tricky for me to show you guys because it's kind of a two-handed job, but I will show you step by step the best that I can. So the first thing you wanna wanna do is get out the, whoops, get out the four screws with the larger um, screw top. As you can see here, there is, whoop, as you can see here, there is one that is smaller and one that is larger. The smaller one is meant for the GPU. The larger one is meant for the CPU. And so you're going to want to take this and disassemble it. But keep in mind where everything is. So the first step in the actual installation is to get the screw by itself with one nylon washer and put it through the back of the motherboard. So step number one is to take the ni or to take the screw with the nylon washer and put it through the back of the motherboard. Make sure you have the nylon washer on there or else it might ground out on the motherboard, which would just be a bad day. As you can see, it is poking through right there. I'm going to get the other three set up. All right. So the next step is kind of an optional one. I say it's optional because it's not actually necessary for getting your block mounted, but it does make it a little bit easier. So you guys can see how we've got the four screws poking through. If you are to, or if you want to actually like secure the screw in, you put on another nylon washer like that. And then there is a small nut that you can then screw on to the, um, the actual screw itself, which then you can tighten down to the motherboard. So you can actually have the, um, the standoffs actually be properly secured to the motherboard. Um, yet again, I can't exactly do that one handed, because uh, you do have to hold it from the back of the motherboard typically. Now, I say it's optional because I've done plenty of CPU block mountings without actually doing this, just because I've never found it to be ultimately necessary, but, eh, your results may vary. I haven't had any issues, but if you're more comfortable doing it like that, well then, yeah. Alright, got a big old glop of thumero thermal of thermal paste on there. I just used the included stuff. Um, I wouldn't actually recommend using the included stuff because it's not typically the greatest. I would recommend using something like Noctua's NTH2. But here is our shiny new block. And remember to remove the peeling from the back or else your temperatures will literally be in the 90s. And now you can just slide it on over. And then how you finish it off is you just take these four little screws or these four little springs. Wow, I am just dropping everything today. And then you just slide them over the top of the screw. And then you take your larger nuts
and then you just simply screw her on down. There we go, that should be good, tightened down. Give it a little wiggle to make sure that it's not actually gonna go anywhere. And then that should be good. Okay, so the block is installed. Um, let's see, what is next? We could probably get the radiator mounted. And actually, I should go flush this thing real quick. Um, for new radiators, typically the best course of action is to actually go and like take it into a bathroom and just run some sink water through it. Yes, I know technically that isn't the correct thing to do. You should be using distilled water. But as long as you're not like having sink water running in your loop, you should be fine. Um, I've done this many times and I've never had any growth in any of my loops. Whoops. I'm just using normal distilled water. So I'm going to go wash this thing out real quick and then I will be getting it mounted into the case. All right, so I got the radiator all flushed out. There actually wasn't much in the way of flux inside of it, so that was pretty good. Okay, so how you mount a radiator is you've got to find the baggie of radiator screws, obviously, whoops, that one's supposed to be in there. And you wanna take the, essentially the long radiators are for going through the fan into the radiator, but then the short fan, or the short screws are for just going through like your case and screwing the radiator directly onto your case. It's essentially like screwing on fan, or it's like screwing on fans, honestly, so it's not very complicated. But I'm actually going to put my radiator in the back here, in where the uh, 240 millimeter mount is. I could mount it at the bottom here, because this can take up to a 360 rad, but I figured it's going to look better for the video for up there. Also, just as a quick little side note, remember to use the correct size screws, because if you don't use the correct size screws, you could end up puncturing the radiator, causing the radiator to leak. So these screws are actually set to be the correct size, but this is essentially where the radiator is going to be and where it's going to be set up inside of our case. All right, now that I got the radiator mounted, let's talk about pump mounting brackets. So they end up giving you two of these things, and it is ideal to be able to use two, but not all cases are going to have little spots to screw these in. Um, my case actually luckily does have some pretty decent spots. Essentially, you just screw it in from one side and hold the, um, the other side, which is just a nut with like a pair of pliers or something. I'm not a huge fan of this mounting system, primarily because it isn't the greatest thing in the world, but it does work. Um, I haven't had any problem with these things ever falling on me. But if you have a better spot to mount a pump, uh, it can be a lot easier or just to buy a 120 millimeter fan adapter to a pump mount and then you could mount it directly onto the radiator. Evidently, you can do the same thing with this, but I'm not exactly sure how unless you're just like letting that overhang by a whole bunch or like mounting the pump sideways. That'd be weird. I don't know. But yeah, I'm just going to be mount mounting my pump right in the front of the case. So you're given two sizes of screws for mounting the pump. The smaller screws are for mounting the actual brackets to your case, while the longer screws are actually meant for uh, going through this little hole here eh. in the back of the acrylic. Yet again, hard to do one-handed. There we go. You kind of like screw it in from the back there, and then you have a nut that you'd have on the other side of this to essentially uh, screw it into. And then your pump is just hanging there off of uh, the two metal brackets. And yes, I would recommend using both of them because um, these things can get kind of heavy when they're full of So I'm going to get that mounted up really quick. All right, so now we got our pump all mounted up. You guys can see that it just sits in there very nicely. There's actually a port on the back here, which I'm hoping is going to line up with the port on the radiator. Um, don't know if it will or not. Hoping. Um, and that honestly is one of the parts about doing hardline tubing is you never really know if it's going to line up perfectly until you do it. But that'll be uh, something that we'll tackle next or that will be something we tackle later. But for now, I'm just going to put on these red LED fans and we will be testing with these fans plus some actual high quality, high pressure fans. 
I'm not holding my breath on these ones, but I want to give them a shot just to see how well they are going to do. And to mount the fans, you just need the longer screws that go directly through the fans into the radio. All right, I have got the found founds. I've got the fans in there and mounted. I have the pump bracket mounted, and then I started putting in the fittings. These fittings are, I think they're called dual rotary fittings uh, or two touch rotary fittings. So essentially you want to take off the top hat and keep the top hat plus the o-ring that comes with the top hat keep those separate and then screw these into all of your ports where you're going to need uh well liquid cooling and these are all standard g quarter fittings um i'm sure i'm going to talk about this in like the in-depth analyst or the in-depth analysis of this kit but everything here is standard G quarter fitting, standard literally everything. So I'm going to get all of the fittings in place and where I want them, and then we can start bending tubes. All right, so I just got my fittings moved because I decided I was going to do something a little bit different. I actually just post-tested the PC to make sure it actually posted and we're good. Um, okay, so there really is no magic way to bend these tubes to make them look perfect every time it's a lot of trial and error and it's a lot of learning um i am by all means not an expert tube bender and i try to take as many shortcuts as possible uh trying to use a whole bunch of extra fittings like 90 degrees and 45 degree fittings but i'm not going to be using it for this particular build because we don't actually have any uh because none of them came with a kit but I'm going to do my very best to bend the tubes at the best that I can. Now, this is the first tube that I actually have set up here, which goes directly from the reservoir, or from the radiator right to the reservoir. I also ended up changing the, um, this is the bleeder valve, and then this is the normal cap that you were supposed to use here. But because the bleeder valve was too tall, I couldn't put it up to there. Um... I'm going to end up not being able to fill the reservoir as full as what I otherwise would have been able to because of the bleeder valve, but it should be fine, and besides, this is not a permanent setup by any means. Although, you know, I really wish I had a red motherboard. I really wish I did, but I don't. So I'm using Max 58 Deluxe, because this bad boy needed a little bit of love. It's, he hasn't had any time in the sun for a long time, so I figured we'd water cool him. Also, when it comes to water cooling a computer with hardline tubing, you need a few things. First of all, you're going to need a heat gun. Um, this is just one that I grabbed off of Amazon for like, I think it was like 20, 30 bucks. And then also, you're going to need some extra bits and bobs. These are, um, this is a deburring tool, and this is a tube cutting tool. This is a 14 millimeter silicon insert for a tube. And then these are some actual like uh, bending aids, actually. You know, these might actually come in handy. I've never used them before. They might actually work. All of this stuff that I have right here actually came in a kit. Um, I will be putting links down in the description below to stuff that I use. Um, you could probably find better deals. Like I know you can get cheaper hot air guns than what I did. But I will be putting this kind of stuff down in the link in the description below. Unfortunately, it is kind of necessary because if you try to bend the tube without a silicon insert, you will just crush the tube. The tube won't hold its shape. So you need to have the silicon insert to make sure the tube holds its shape. And yet again, I'm not an expert tube bender, so probably go and watch somebody's video on how to bend tubes really well because that's not me. But um, I'm going to get to bending tubes and wish me luck. All right, so I got some distilled water and I've got my fill bottle. I'm just going to fill this up and I'm going to start filling up the reservoir from this hole right here. Also, never, ever, ever let your pump run dry. It will kill your pump very quickly. If it happens for like a half second, you're probably fine. But I say probably because I've seen pumps die by just simply being powered on dry. So always make sure you've got water in your system before you turn on the system with the pump connected. All right, let's see if it leaks. Hey, no leaks. Even though this tube looks absolutely hideous, it did not leak. All right, let's get the rest of the system filled up. 
All right, so I got the loop fully filled and ready to go. I also installed Windows 11, and yes, you can install Windows 11 on an X58 PC with a modified installator or a modified installer. And I also installed Unigen Heaven as well as Hardware Monitor. So I'm going to set this thing through a couple of benchmark stress tests just to see how well this singular loop actually handles it in a like a simulated gaming situation. Alrighty guys, so we got the loop all filled up. It's all ready to go. Um, there's still a little bit of air bubbles at the top of the reservoir, but that's kind of the way it's going to be because, well, I can't exactly fill it up anymore past that point. Um, kind of the unfortunate thing of how I have this set up, you could set this up far more intelligently than what I did. Also, hardcore squeaky chair. Um, by the way, we are going to be running uh, Unigen Heaven. I just installed Windows 11 and a hardware monitor. We're going to be running Unigen Heaven for a simulated benchmark or for a simulated gaming stress test. And I want to see if this system with these fans on the radiator is actually going to be able to hold it. I don't know if it will. I think it'll be able to. But also we're just leaving the entire case open because I don't have any bottom fans or rear fan. But like I said, X5680 as well as an R9 Fury X. So let's just see how the system runs, shall we? By the way, a kind of a side note. This pump is so quiet. The chipset fan is louder on my motherboard than it is the actual water pump. That's amazing. And that's not even set very low. That's set like medium speed. I love this pump. It's like my new favorite pump. All right, so now we got the build out of the way. Let's get into thermals and then the actual review. Okay. So for thermals, I wanted to do my first test to be an unrealistic test for the entire system. I put on just the two fans that came included. I put them on the radiator and then I took off the side panels for uh, my computer. Now, those were the only two fans in the entire system besides the chipset fan and the power supply fan. And um, it actually performed a lot better than what I thought it was going to. I ran Unigen Heaven for about 60 minutes for each test that I did, and the hottest CPU core peaked at 60 degrees Celsius, and the hottest GPU core peaked at 52 degrees Celsius. That is rather impressive, especially being the fact that the CPU is using rather ugh, thermal paste. I would consider that to be an actually really good showing for the entire kit. When moving over to um, the second test that I did, as you guys can see behind me, the entire system is full of cool moon fans. Now, cool moon fans are not exactly high static pressure fans, but they do move a pretty good volume of air. They are designed to be airflow fans, and I have used them in water cooled systems in the past, and they've performed relatively well. So, with a kit of six fans, I ended up uh, dropping my CPU and GPU temperature two degrees so the cpu's hottest core ended up peaking at 58 degrees celsius and the gpu's hottest core peaked at 50 degrees celsius which i know yet again is not an ideal situation but that's relatively impressive when you consider the fact that this is an r9 fury x it's a hot card that's why these cards originally came with uh aio liquid coolers on them and yeah honestly even even just adding in some additional case fans, I would have no problem running this system 24-7 in its current configuration, and leaving it in the configuration that it's in right now, yet again, I, I don't see a problem with this. I was originally planning on then doing a third test, putting on some high static pressure fans to see how much the temperature could drop, but I just kind of decided against it because I didn't think it was ultimately necessary. And now let's get into the actual review, because I think that's where the real value of this video probably lies. I really like this kit. I really, really like this kit. There's a lot of parts about this kit that honestly really appealed to me. You can buy this kit off of Amazon in a green color or off of eBay in a red color. Um, it kind of varies on the colors you're going to be able to find, because there are they are essentially Chinese OEM kits. Um... But you can find them for about $150 off of Amazon. For that price, you're getting a decent amount. A 240mm 18-row aluminum radiator, which performs very, very well. 
eight really nice fittings. Remember, I did say that these are the same fittings that I have in my main rig. I now own 18 of these fittings, and I'm not disappointed by that. I use them in my main X58 rig because I've never had any trouble with them. I've never had one leak, I've never had one with a busted o-ring, I've always had good luck with these particular fittings. Not to mention the fact that this kit then comes with tubing and a really nice pump and reservoir combo. I made a mistake, um, the pump does make a little bit of noise, it does vibrate a little bit, but it is hard mounted to the side of my case. If I would have uh, mounted it differently with um, the anti-static vibrator pad thing, um, if I would have mounted it using that, then the vibration sound from the pump would have been significantly more muffled. But still, the chipset fan was louder than the pump itself. So that does kind of lay credence to the fact the pump is relatively quiet, and properly mounted, you probably wouldn't even hear it. And now finally to, I guess, kind of like the two disappointing things about this kit, is the GPU water block, which I will talk about here in a second, as well as the thermal paste for the CPU. As I talked about in the thermal section, the CPU is running way harder than the GPU. 10 degrees is not really margin of error. 10 degrees is hot. And the GPU or the CPU should not be running that hot. If I were to replace the CPU's thermal paste with something like GD900, I'm sure that the temperatures would have been 5 to 8 degrees Celsius cooler. And if I would have used something like Noctua's NTH2, which is kind of like my long term use thermal paste that I like to go for. I honestly, I'm sure that the thermals would have been significantly better, where the CPU would have been running a lot cooler than the GPU. But, with that being said, this is simply included thermal paste. And, yet again, thermal paste is pretty easy and readily accessible. Speaking about being readily accessible, let's talk about the fact that this entire kit is modular. In more than one way. All of the fittings are standard G quarter fittings, meaning that you can use them for whatever water cooling endeavors you want. All of the tubing is 14 millimeter by 10 millimeter tubing, which is a standard size tubing for hardline liquid cooling tubing. Uh, the CPU block can be used on pretty much all platforms except for AM4 and Threadripper. Yeah, I don't know why you'd ever try and stick one of these things on a Threadripper system. Um. Yet again, the only downside of that water block is that it doesn't fit on an AM4, which I know doesn't really affect me, but I know for other people it is kind of a drawback. But with that being said, everything is modular. If you wanted to replace the red tubing with clear uh, PETG tubing, you can do that. If you wanted to replace the copper or the aluminum radiator for a copper radiator, you can do that. It's all standard. And now let's talk about the actual value of the kit. Even at $150, this kit has a lot of value. The pumps that you can get, you can get non-variable speed pumps, the SC600s, typically go for anywhere between $25 to $35. The CPU water blocks typically go for anywhere between $15 to $25. The fittings, I forget what I've paid for mine. Okay, so the fittings that come in this kit, I just looked it up, uh, is about $14 per four fittings. So that is a, another, what is that, $20, $28 worth of fittings. And the two fans, yet again, the two fans and the GPU block are kind of the only kind of meh items. And if you use the included fans, which honestly, yet again, aren't terrible, that's just more value added on, and then the only thing that really becomes waste is the GPU block. And truthfully, I really do think for $150, the value's gotta be there. I'll end up putting like a calculation up on screen, um, comparing like doing a do-it-yourself kit versus just buying one of these kits, and I think the price is gonna be pretty competitive. I'll need to do the math to actually put it up on screen. But yeah, honestly, for the $150, it's not bad. If you go on eBay, you can find it for even cheaper, because I didn't pay $150 for mine. I actually only paid $120 for mine, um, because I got a deal on it from eBay. Okay, so then after uh, doing the quick math, 
Uh, I just added a lot of stuff to my cart in Amazon, and without taxes or shipping, it would come to about $180 to do a pretty comparable kit. And that one doesn't even come with a variable speed pump, that's just one of the 19-watt uh, standard speed pumps with a smaller reservoir. Um, yeah. So, there you go. Yes, you could probably get the prices down a little bit by shopping around, but ultimately let's be honest here when they make these kits they try to make them as accessible as possible and make them as well cost effective as possible like i said these are chinese oem kits and because of that there's definitely value there honestly just the pump res radiator cpu block and fittings that's probably your value right there getting the fans plus the thermal paste and the tubing just as kind of a side benefit is just a bonus. In fact, I'm going to be reusing this reservoir. I'm going to be reusing these fittings. I'm going to be planning a pretty fun build in the future here. We're going to be using these parts. Yeah, I can understand that not everybody is going to agree with my decision here. But honestly, I give this thing like a 4 out of 5. When it comes to just the value for money, it's more than there. And if you can find a good deal on it, like what I found on mine on eBay, definitely is a good deal. There is just one, I guess kind of two, I guess, other downsides that kind of come into using a hardline liquid tubing kit. Soft tubing, it's very, very easy. Very, very easy. I actually plan on doing a video, same case, same setup, just with soft tubing. Um, those kits are cheaper and far easier to use. As well as the fact someone wanting to get into hardline tubing, you're definitely going to want to just buy more tubing. Even if you just buy this kit, you're going to want to buy more tubing, which isn't all that expensive. But at the same time, it's like hard tubing is a lot harder to do than soft tubing, at least in my opinion. And there is one more final downside that I really think needs to be talked about. And that is the additional things you're going to need for actually bending tubes. You're going to need a... I think they're called like the water tubing kits, like 14 millimeter. I forget exactly what my kit is called, but it's for 14 millimeter outer diameter, uh, 10 millimeter inner diameter. And that other big downside has got to be the actual thing that you need for bending the tubes. Number one, you're going to need a heat gun. Uh, something like an air dryer or like a hair dryer is not going to be enough for you. You actually need to go out and invest in a heat gun. Uh, you can get them for anywhere between like $20 to $30. Um, I think mine was like $30, and I've had a lot of good use out of it. You're also going to need the other accessories that actually are well, required for when you're going to be bending tubes. AKA the deburring tool, the actual tube cutting tool, as well as the uh, silicon insert for bending tubes. That has got to be the biggest kind of expense when it comes to this kit. Um, because that stuff in and of itself is probably another $50 to $60 on top of what you're already going to be spending for the kit. Um, it's less... It's a lot less of an investment to do softline tubing than hardline tubing but once you have the stuff to do hardline tubing well obviously like a silicon insert for a tube isn't going to go bad a heat gun's not going to go bad after one use so you'll still have the stuff but it's just kind of how much do you want to invest in the actual act of hard tubing because yet again soft tubing while being a lot easier is also cheaper to do simply based upon the fact that well Soft tubing, soft tubing. And you can, well, not need to worry about making absolutely disgusting bends like that. Ugh. I still, I'm so disappointed with myself when it came to that. And, yeah, that's, that's probably where I'm going to end the video off here. Because there's really nothing more I can say. The kit has a lot of value. The kit was really fun to mess around with. And for hardline tubing lot of good fun a lot of good fun if you want to get into hardline tubing this is a wonderful spot to start there is more upfront cost when it comes to hardline tubing than there is for softline tubing but it really isn't 
it's really not bad, in my opinion. Hardline tubing is not terrible, as long as you're not limiting yourself on the amount of tubing that you have. Always get more tubing than what you're going to need. That's what it comes down to. Always, always, always get more tubing than what you need. And, yeah. But I think that is probably where I should end this one off because I think I have said my piece and I think I've said more than enough in this little video. So I guess I'll see you guys. At... Well, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Peace.